Let's take a moment to talk about Haru. She is, without a doubt, BR's goodest dog. Or, to be more accurate, wolf. She's lovable in her doe-eyed affection and convincing in the way her fur and ears realistically ruffle to the touch. She's also dependably loyal to your command, leaping on enemies without a moment's hesitation, and yes, she's inescapably goofy too. Sometimes that's intentional, like when playing fetch between missions, and sometimes it's less so, like when walking vertically up a wall. Quirks aside, developer Endeavor 1 really outdid itself with this virtual companion. She's an enamoring blend of authentic, entertaining, and clumsy all at the same time. Arashi Castles of Sin is much the same story. Right from the start, you can tell this PSVR exclusive stealth game, in which you'll infiltrate castles to overthrow notorious warlords, is a labour of love. Neo, Sekiro, and Tsushima set the bar high for stylish takes on Japanese history, and although unmistakably a lower budget effort, Arashi does its best to carry that trend forward with stunning hand drawn cutscenes that are a treat to behold, Japanese voiceovers, and a fantastic art direction that really captures an accurate, if slightly blurry and haggard, feudal Japan. Though most levels mainly boil down to a series of walls and grassy patches, each has distinct standout moments to take in. Gameplay is similarly ambitious. Endeavor 1 aims for wide open level design that lets players pick and choose how they approach any given situation. The game is definitely linear, but each area has multiple routes through to the next, catering to a mix of non-lethal or more combative gameplay. You're mostly free to choose whether to stick to the long grass or ammo permitting, unleash a barrage of arrows, mines, grenades, and even poison onigiri, the latter of which guards will hastily and hilariously scoff upon discovery. Or, of course, Haru's vicious bite is almost always just a call away. The amount of choice on offer is impressive, even if many of the extra weapons simply boil down to throwing or shooting a different kind of item with similar results. Whether picking enemies off while sneaking through the grass or darting across rooftops with a hookshot to avoid them entirely, Arashi often nails its stealthy thrills, and it's definitely possible to replay the five lengthy levels, which total out to about 45 hours of playtime, and adopt different paths and play styles almost right the way through. It also helps that the motion controls are implemented well, and that Endeavor 1 clearly knows how to get the most out of those troublesome move controllers. Paired with the very level design, the game comes together to offer plenty of rewarding moments, like when trading arrows with watchtowers across Misty Canyon scenery, or dangling above unsuspecting guards and then slicing them as you drop towards the ground. If a rare difficulty spike was getting the best of me, I could almost always find a hidden path that allowed me to avoid the encounter altogether, or a vantage point to pick off troublesome foes. While not as open-ended as, say, budget cuts, it's hard to find a VR game as versatile as this. Where Arashi stumbles though, at least early on, is in getting players to embrace that versatility. For starters, there's no kind of rating or reward system for tackling levels in a certain way, meaning there's no real reason to set yourself the extra challenge of reducing your body count and leaving guards unharmed. Within the game's first 10 minutes, you gain its deadliest tools, arrows, shurukens, and haru. The former two allow you to silently kill most enemies at range with a single hit anywhere on the body, and while ammo isn't overflowing, it's hardly scarce either. Haru, meanwhile, provides an unending source of distractions and attacks to lean on. It's not until the game's last two levels that things get trickier, with enemies either doubling up or going out on patrol with more armor. Even then, though, the rules of the stealth mechanics are pretty forgiving. You can stand right in front of enemies in long grass without them so much as batting an eyelid, and bodies disappear so you don't need to worry about others discovering them out on patrol. You can also immediately highlight nearby enemies with the tap of one button, and walking doesn't make a sound unless you break into a sprint. The short range jump, meanwhile, works like a bit of a get out of jail free card, allowing you to instantly hop between grassy patches and, if you're so inclined, even find plenty of spots to exploit in the level design. Enemy AI is also spotty, and they're not always able to detect actions that should be a dead giveaway. Even if you are discovered, you can simply jump into the area's exit and spawn in the next map completely undetected, or call on Haru to distract a foe and kill them before getting into a fight. There's not even any penalty to Haru being discovered, there's just a giant deadly wolf walking around enemy encampments and no one really seems to mind. I understand Arashi's desire to empower players and let them step into the role of a lethal assassin, but I wish the game challenged me more either through its own difficulty or giving me reasons to self-impose some restrictions on how I played. It's a little easy going then, but I still really enjoyed Arashi's stealth elements. 
Even though a feather-like tap of a sword can crumple an enemy in an instant, I found myself playfully acting out deadly swipes and savouring the moments I'd lean around corners to fire off an arrow. Endeavor 1 does a great job of making each level and the areas within feel distinct, and every time I left one area I felt genuinely curious to see what the developer would throw at me in the next. More troublesome though is the game's messy sword combat, which, if anything, provides the main motivation to fully embrace the stealth. Battles mostly consist of you first blocking an enemy's attack and then retaliating with the opening you're given. It can work when enemies stay rooted to the spot, but they're often on their toes and step forward into you bypassing your block. It's really hard to regain your footing when you're trying to block with the same hand that controls the direction of movement, and I'd often find the game was registering attacks I wasn't intending to make, killing enemies even with just the slightest hand movement. This can also make the repetitive boss battles, which only really differ in the types of special attacks they do, a frustrating disappointment. It's a real shame given the incredible character design and backstories that have gone into each. There's the start of a decent melee system here, but it feels like it needs a more directed approach in the vein of Until You Fall's on-screen indicators to really rein it in and make it more cohesive. It's fortunate for Arashi that this element is only one small part of the overall experience. There's definite structural problems with Arashi then, but I ultimately found the fantastic level design and the amount of player freedom kept me tackling its levels with enthusiasm. Its issues are inherent, but never turned the experience into a slog or made me want to turn it off and I was glad to have negotiated my way through its meaty campaign, what's and all. So in summary, Arashi Castles of Sin might not go down as VR's answer to Tenchu, but it gets a lot right with its open-ended level design and a fantastic realisation of feudal Japan. It's a rare VR game that gives you genuine choice in deciding how to get from A to B, and when it works, captures the slick elitism of becoming a ninja. But it's let down by its clumsier elements, like bugs, bad enemy AI, and underwhelming sword combat. Even those dark forces combined aren't enough to derail the fun sneaking at the core of the experience, but there's plenty of room for Arashi to improve with a potential sequel. Thanks so much for watching this review, if you liked it make sure to comment, like and subscribe, and stay with Upload VR for all the latest PSVR coverage.